Yes, don't forget to check out Doggy Diamonds No Filter Podcast on Apple Podcasts. It's also available on Spotify. The links are right below in the description box, so you ain't got to go far to get all that. It's right there. Get to it. Also, for only $100, I promote whatever you need on my social medias and my website. That's my Twitter, Facebook, Insta Stories, YouTube community, and my website, www.doggydiamondstv.com. Hit me up on Instagram at Doggy Diamonds for your promo. Serious inquiries only. Must be cash app ready. And if you have an issue Without, you know, you don't get some of the updates and you might have missed content. Make sure you go to www.theinterviewking.com. Sign up for the email list and all the content will definitely come directly to your inbox. Let's go. So as you stream in, make sure you hit the like button. I'm not going to do a long intro. We're just going to do something really quick. And uh, make sure you ready. Make sure you ready. Are you ready? Because we going there today. All right, man. Stop the music. Stop the music. What's up, everybody? I go by the name of Doggy Diamonds. We got a guest in the building. Introduce yourself to the people. Uh, his, my name is uh, OGZ's motherfucking nut. <laughs> Nocturnal. Nocturnal. So where do they definitely know you from? Uh, Well... You know, I did. Uh, I've been doing music for twenty years, so I, I started off on the Chronic album. Mm -hmm. um, I was on Bang Bang, and I wrote three songs for the radio after that on the Chronic album. And mm -hmm. then um, I did. I was on the Y soundtrack, and I came out with, uh, "Are you married?" No. Well, all I really know is your hoe wants to be with me, and she ain't playing. <laughs> Love that record. Um, I love Take It Easy, though. Because it's the boy you call at, at Missy Elliott. You know, Missy Elliott, she, she's, so, she's so brilliant. She came in when Jay Brown found out I wasn't signed to Dr. Dre, and I said I, I wouldn't start my own label with LA Confidential. Mm -hmm. Jay Brown took me to Sylvia Rome, and Missy Elliott came in the meeting when I was having a, a corporate meeting. She was like, I know you're going to sign this dude, right? And then that's when Missy Elliott came and got on my first single for for the Knox Landon album. Man, I, I love I love that, man. So, um what's the name of the song? Bad Intentions, the other song, right? Yeah. That was a big record for you because both of those records actually had Dre on it. Dre wasn't really co-signing people or doing records with him. What was that like to get Dre on it? Well, you know, before I was even known, I was writing for Dre. I was a ghostwriter. I was a ghostwriter for Dre for like three years. And I, I wasn't really worried about being in the limelight. But the good part about that was, is like, when he finally wanted me to be in the limelight, he was like, knock. And he was like, knock, knock. That's what he called me. I was like, what's up, Dre? He was like, I want to shoot the video for the Bad Attention song. He was like, how you want it to be done? I was like, well, let's let's do a video within the video and, and let's go to a whole brothel. Mm. And let's get and let's, and let's get Miss Parker in it. Oh wow, <laughs> wow, yeah, that's Adam. Mm. Yeah. Hey, Miss Parker. Yeah. So, so you 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 do these songs, and then Jay Z and Nas is going at it. And yeah, but you know, he wrote Jay Z wrote for uh, he wrote Steel Dr. E for Dre. I know that, but he uses bad intentions as one of his biggest diss freestyles to Nas. When you heard that, what was you thinking? Well, I had a show to do with Nas at two weeks <laughs> later in New York, so I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> but it's cool, though, because when I talked to Nas, Nas, Nas is a cool dude. You know, I'm an NOI, he's an NOI. You know, people, real people do real things, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But Nas, Nas got it by... Cause Nas, you know, he was like, I won't even fuck my baby mama. What the fuck? <laughs> Damn. Woke up this morning. He, he, hey, Nas called him a Tybo ho. Why? How you? He said, Hey, you thirty five in the karate class. Damn. He called him a Tybo ho. I told him he had dick sucking lips. <laughs> so this is safe to say you was more ether size than takeover. Well, I just appreciated the fact that it was a peaceful beef. Got you. They didn't, they didn't, like, take it as far as, like, certain people do and, like, kill each other. Like, mm. you know what I mean? That's, mm. that's bad. But it was funny. Mm. You know, Jay-Z Jay -Z made it personal. 
Mm-hmm. And I did. You know what I mean? Got you. I, I, I think that Jay-Z won that. Jay-Z lost that beat because he made it personal. Talking about I left handles on your baby seat. Mm. And I heard I heard now I was in an interview like, I wouldn't even fuck that bitch. What, what he said, I wouldn't even fuck that bitch with my enemy's dick. Dang. <laughs> yeah. So you 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 have this. You he have came back with he told, he called Jay Z a tie ball hoe. He told him he had dick sucking lips. <laughs> that was a cold one. Um. So you all the way in the West Coast. You hear this 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 record beef between Jay Z and Nas. Artist. Huh. I like both of them as artists. They both dope. Yeah. On the West though, when it get personal, um. People be dying on the, on the, like, so you, that's what you appreciated about it being peaceful between them? Yeah, it was, it was a peaceful beef. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it wasn't on the, like on the West, people start talking crap. That's, and see, if you realize the internet is not good for anybody, like, like a lot of people, because it's a lot of, it's a lot of rappers out that has died, like over 280 rappers that have died last year. Mm. You know what I mean? Entertainers, like mm. rappers that, like, Actually, was was pertinent in the game. Mm. They passed away. The internet is not good for anybody. You never know who somebody knows, or just because you talk about that one dude, you don't know who he knows. Mm-hmm. It might show up to your show just to pop you. Facts, facts. You know what I mean? You gotta watch what you say on the internet. You can't just be dissing people recklessly on the internet. I don't think they you know learn. I, mean? I don't think they learn that yet, though. They still do the shit day in and day out, and. That's why I don't build my my. That's why I don't build my career and my music off beat, bro. Mm. Uh, music is fun music, and yeah, I talk shit, mm. but I, I talk shit with beat for a living. I've been doing that for twenty years. But the crazy part about it is, you can't just be running off at the mouth on the internet and think you don't know everybody who somebody know, bro. Mm-hmm. And like a motherfucker might buy the ticket just to pop your ass. Facts. Yeah, some people will book you to pop you. Cause you don't I'm take, you. yeah. Cause you don't take much money to book people nowadays. They'll come to a show for two thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll book your ass for five racks, and the motherfucker that booked you for the event is the motherfucker that's gonna pop you. Yeah. So, so let me ask you something. So, when you first, cause you know, a lot of we didn't know that you did this work with Dre like that. We just knew that because you was ghostwriting. We just knew that he appeared on your um, first two songs. Was it ever a time where people thought he was trying to put, replace Snoop with you, and you was getting um, that feedback from people? No, cause you know Snoop is my family. You know we both from Long Beach, wow. so you know that's my big cousin right there. Like he's four years older than me. Got you. The thing being is, he wasn't trying to replace Snoop with me. Him and Snoop was doing a movie, and he get, he put me in charge of doing the Wild soundtrack. Mm-hmm. He thought my song. Would need to be put out because of the work I put in. Got you. So he put that song out, and then he did he did the Watch soundtrack second with Snoop. Got you. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a replacement setting because I went to the Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg reunion in Hawaii when I was on parole writing for Dre. <laughs> <laughs> That's over now though, so you know you can say that out loud. Um, so so yeah, I can't do about that now. Yeah, so um, at this time, why didn't you sign with Aftermath? Why, did, why didn't you even want to go Aftermath? Well, I, I asked Dre how many people did he have signed to Aftermath. And he said about, oh, about 250. I said, well, I don't I don't want to be 251. Do I look like a chef artist to you? Mm. I said, I'll I write for you exclusively. I'll write and do what I got to do. But if you can, can you help me build my label? Mm. And he was like, okay. Gotcha. And so Dre put... So, what is it like being in the studio with Dre? Is it a bunch of beats that you pick from, or do he say, "I got this for you, rap to this"? How does it work? It's it's tedious because Dre will sit there and make. Um, he's a perfectionist. First of all, he's a big ass kid. He'll buy a new, <laughs> a new sound toy, mm-hmm. and he'll play that one toy to find the perfect sound that he want to hear. Mm. You know? And then, like, he'll have just a, a drum pattern to it or whatever, and then. When he find that one sound, he'll, he'll give it what he wants to it. Mm. And then being in the studios with him is tedious because if he don't like one bar that you did wrong, you're going to sit there and do it over and over again until you like the way you said it. Mm. Now, I, I remember I, I actually had to do 
two bars over and over again for like damn near 30 minutes. So I mean Dre is a perfectionist, you know what I mean? He 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 knows what he wants to hear. So a four hour what? session could turn into an eight hour session. I was doing bang bang, he told me, he told me he said, knock, knock. I was like, well, I was I, in, in the vocal booth with the paper in my hand. He said, You dope. I said, well, thank you, Dre. He said, nah, out the booth. I said, what the fuck? You motherfucker just said to me? Walk out of the booth. I said, what the fuck you talking about? He's like, the way you saying it to me when you rapping it in here is not the way you saying it on the booth. Mm. In the booth, you sound like a robot. I said, you know what? Fuck this shit. I threw the paper around. I just went freestyle. Wow. That's where, where late nights is full of lead and whistles as it goes by. Murder arrives any time. But let's take flight when the four five ignites. Some hard skipper beats them get blew out and never be light. That that was a freestyle. Mm. Only people I ever had to worry about when I was growing up freestyling is Crooked Eye and Tech Nine from Long Beach. Crooked Eye from um, from from Long Beach like me, mm -hmm. and Tech Nine from Compton. Mm. But we used to freestyle battle and be like, we used to have the battles and we used to be winning prizes. But the only two people I ever had to worry about was Tech Nine from Compton and Crooked Eye. Mm. Before anybody even knew who we was. So you 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 grew up in um now famous. Uh, Long Beach. Was it a lot of rappers out there? And we used to be on the block freestyling, bro. You know, we'd be out there like waiting, like, who turn is it? Mm. Waiting on you know, the next thing to come through. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just out shooting shit and, and really like just clowning each other. Like, you know what I mean? Playing the dozen and clowning each other while we while we rapping. Mm -hmm. But really, we was hustling, so we, we didn't have shit else to do but barbecue and talk shit. Wasn't Domino from Long Beach as well? Domino's from Long Beach. A lot of people don't know uh, Domino's before Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. uh, my Snoop Dogg. You got uh, the Dove Shack that was before Snoop Dogg. The Twins that were before Snoop Dogg. Everybody saying, oh, Snoop Dogg made Long Beach. No, it was a whole bunch of people before Snoop Dogg. Mm. But Snoop Dogg made it pertinent when it, when it, when it was Compton and Long Beach together. Mm. I mean, because Dr. Dre already had it. It just made it just made Long Beach that much bigger to get Snoop. Got you. you know, none of them had Dr. Dre. Yeah, you know he he is the sound of the West Coast. Him and DJ Quick is the sound of the West Coast. Mm -hmm. DJ Quick and Battle Cat. I'm about to say my favorite is Battle Cat, and I like Battle Cat. Battle Cat got the gangster folks for real. Yeah, and I like and I I like DJ. Would say and one G is dope, one G is dope too. You know, one G album sold. When one G put out the return, when one G put out Regulators, mm -hmm. with they done the soul, it sold more than the first Chronic album. Word? The single? Yeah. No, yes. The whole album. Mm, wow. So Regulators sold more than the first Chronic album. Wow. With him and, and, that, and that's Dr. Dre's little stepbrother. Mm. One G is his brother. Mm -hmm. Definitely. They, they got the same mom, different dads. I like um from the West Coast. I also like DJ Khalil too. I love DJ Khalil. Um, oh yeah, he's cool. And I like um I like Hutch too. I like Above the Law production. Oh, but I, Above the Law is funny. Yeah. Maybe have. Yeah, yeah. That's that's that was like Black Superman. Love yeah, there was some real men. Like like out there, you guys had a uh, uh, Public Enemy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We had Above the Law. Got you. And Militants out there, and, and there's some militants out here, mm -hmm. and that's the well, law. So you 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 go with Electra opposed to these, you know, your your home team. You said well, what? You're wrong. The only African American CEO there ever been in life that owns her label. Yeah, she was she was the CEO of Electra. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't African American CEOs before. Russell? No, uh, female. Female, female, yeah, because you said the only, yeah, okay, female. She's the only female CEO I know of. So you get into the system, Um, we we see projects from you, and then we ain't see nothing no more. What happened? Well, first of all, I was doing too much, and then um, I had to step back because my children didn't even know really who I was, because I was always on the road or I was always in the studio, because I'm, I'm a studio rat and I love to work. And I'm always doing features and I'm always on the road. So when I realized my children started getting like 11, 12, 
And my son was when they, my son was nine and my daughter was twelve and they barely knew who I was. I was like, let me step back for a minute. Mm. But now my children are grown. My daughter's twenty one. She's in school with a car and, and she's in high. She's in college. My, my son is eighteen. He's got a car. He's in college. Mm-hmm. Now it's I'm out the back cake. They know who I am. They love me. Everything is cool. I mean, as a man, you gotta let them know they come from greatness. But you also gotta be there as a father. And I was, I was, I was better there. My wife was a homemaker, mm-hmm. so she never worked. She still is. She still don't have to work. Mm-hmm. So I mean, she raised my children. She's way better mother than I am a father. My children only had three rules in their life: listen to your mom, get along with each other, and do good in school. Mm-hmm. I ain't. You, you notice I ain't tell them to listen to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because she was the homemaker, so it make it makes sense. It makes sense. Um, give me some legendary studio sessions you've been in too, because you said you did bang bang, and you what was what were some of the songs that we love that you was right there for the recording of? Me and DJ Quick was a good one. The, the song called Love Slave. Because mm. made to be right in front of me, and then I, I've done uh, it's another song with Battle Cat that I did because Battle Cat helped build my career a whole lot. Mm-hmm. And I didn't get a whole lot of his songs, but I still got a whole lot of songs from Battle Cat. And that was before he was uh, with Soup Dog. But it's a, it's a song called All About the Dough mm. that's on on um, uh, YouTube uh, that I do with Battle Cat. That's one of my favorite songs. It's called All About the Dough. Mm. And, I, and then you got, I, you know, I did, I helped Warren G write uh, The Return of the Regulators. I wrote some songs for Warren G on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Being in the studio with people that's serious about it, mm-hmm. you know, still sharper still, bro. Mm-hmm. Like so, I, if I'm in a, if I'm in the studio with whack people, then I'm gonna fuck around and be whack. <laughs> is so, it? But is it the production I, that drive you or the MC? It's both. Okay. Okay. When I hear the song, and and the guy versus Soul Nate Dog, he taught me um, how to critique my voice. He said, you need to use your voice as an instrument mm-hmm. because you need to insert yourself into the track. Don't do what you want to do on the track. Insert yourself as an instrument. Listen to the sound and insert yourself and go along with that sound. Mm-hmm. Hide that sound the whole way out so you insert yourself into the track like an instrument. Use your voice as an instrument. Mm-hmm. And Nate Dog taught me that, my, my big homie. Got rest his soul. But, and that was a very pertinent thing about him helping me because I used to say too many words in the bars mm-hmm. when I first started. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But he had to slow down and critique my style and, and get a craft to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how many was, how many sessions you've been in that you wasn't on a song that I was like, I was there when they recorded this song, legendary songs that we might hear? Ask me how many songs me and Dre made. How many songs y'all made? Like at least a hundred something. Ask me how many came out. Two. Nine. <laughs> so where the songs That's, at? They they are so the songs I wrote and the songs that I'm on. Oh, songs that he's on. He's on, he, he let me use for my album. So where's the other hundred and where's the other hundred and well the ninety one songs? Probably collecting dust in his vault. So Dre on does the- really have a vote of probably thousands of songs. Yeah, it, 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 and he, and they probably just sitting there collecting dust. Wow, did you ever ask you know him I mean? for them? He still got them. It's mm-hmm. not like he don't got them. They in a, they in a vote in Beverly Hills. Mm. Two my tra- vote is. You said what? I said my vote is at the same place his is. So you got a vote as well? No, no. I my my real my two inch real. Oh, okay, yeah, that's what I was saying. Is it on two inch? Because you know now we digital with everything, but two inch was prior to digital. Right. Do you have any unreleased artists, vo- uh, vocals that we'll probably be like, oh shit? What, 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 what? Do you have any songs with, with, with vocals that you couldn't clear or you didn't use from an artist that will be like, wow? Uh, I would say probably Corrupt, mm. uh, Exhibit, Eminem. Well, you know, Eminem ain't gonna never put a song out if he ripping on his own song. You know what I mean? That's that's what he's not gonna do. What song you ripped Eminem on? Eminem on? Yeah, I ain't gonna talk about that, but he he know <laughs> the one with corrupt. Uh, Dre just didn't feel like he liked he Dre didn't like the beat enough. Mm. But uh, 
a dope song to me, but Dre didn't want Dre didn't want us to to have it and release it. But me and Krupp back in the works of making another song, and then the one with Exhibit. You know, I wrote uh, X Symphony Major. I wrote Dre's part for X Symphony Major. Mm. Verse for that, and then I also write. I wrote the verse for Dre on uh, Hello. We started this gangster shit. This motherfucker things I get. Mm. Hello, we're in. NWA, mm-hmm. and um, I got Dre and Quick together. I was like, Dre, why you ain't ever do a song with Quick? You know what I mean, he was like, man, I was like, is it the producer thing? He was like, no, I was like, well, I called Quick. I was like, you want to do a song with Dre? He was like, yeah. And then I told Dre, I said, well, Quick about to come to the studio. So they made that beat. Mm. Just put me up when you need. And I wrote that song for the, the hook for uh, Miss Toy. And then um, only thing Dre told me was, hey, man, don't let don't let Quick rip me. <laughs> yeah, I said all right. <laughs> so, but then Quick went on to do in the club drums for Dre, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, got you. They that I'm, I'm the one helped link them together. They didn't. They weren't even doing no music or nothing together. Two dudes. But I had a song on my album called Love Slave with Quick, and I was just like, man, why why y'all ain't never did a song together? Like that that was crazy to me. Like, mm-hmm. I don't. You know what I mean? Two dudes from Compton. The only thing Dre told me, because I was writing for him, is like, man, don't let Quick rip me on this song. <laughs> like, I got you, Dre. So the Eminem really? song, Dre got it. Huh? The Eminem song, Dre got it? No, Eminem got it. Oh. He ain't putting that shit out. <laughs> <laughs> he probably got a crazy vote, too. Oh, his, 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 his Eminem's vocals is crazy as hell. Eminem actually... He was an angry guy when he first came out, but he had comedy with him, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, but, um, and he had lyrics with him, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Eminem was Ben, though. Like, I, and he's funny, because we were on tour, I was like, hey, Eminem, man, um, when we went on the, the Chronic tour, I was like, hey, Eminem, man, why don't you let me borrow? Because he, he used to have blow-up dolls on the stage with <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. At the ground, trying on, on up and spoke to her. I was like, Eminem, man, you taking all the bitches. I don't even understand. You fuck a wigger. You taking all the bitches. Let me get one of them blow up, though. He said, uh, I'm missing a few. I think you already got some. <laughs> got you. Eminem, so, he be joking. so, so you did the, you did the Electra thing. Um, what yeah. happened with that situation? Why, why was it? Uh, well, uh, Time Warner, you know, Electra was weird. It was mm-hmm. Warner Brothers, Electra, and Atlantic. Mm-hmm. So Time Warner turned wanted to turn Electra back into a rock and roll situation, which it, which it started off as. Mm-hmm. And he fired the whole rap department. And he sold it. Time Warner sold it to Lee Orr. Mm-hmm. Lee Orr over and fired the whole four hundred people in the rap department. Whoa. So, and then they they released us debt and obligation free. Mm-hmm. And, but they released Fabulous, they released Missy, they released uh, Buster Rhymes, they released a whole lot of people, bro. Mm-hmm. Like it was it was like, and they just let us all go. ODB was, ODB was there. It was a lot of people there. It was a lot. Of, it was a lot of us there, bro. And they just fired the whole rap department. So and then released us from our, from our deal, mm. from the distribution deal. So we had to figure it out from there. You know what I mean? And that's when you fell back and was like, I'm going to be daddy for a little while? Yeah, I'm, I'm publishing checks is cool. I'm cool. No, I'm about to say, I know your publishing is cool because you said all the shit you write. How many how many records did you sell from right now? Well, I, I got, uh, I've sold 280000 in California alone the first week I was out. Mm-hmm. Well, the first weekend I was out. And it sold out, but he, for the way I am album, Lee or fired the rap department, so could nobody reorder them. So there was nobody mm-hmm. there to talk to for more albums. So mid project. When I dropped my project, Lee or sold it. And so right when I got released, everybody got fired. So they couldn't call the rap department to get more, more records sold. You know what I mean? To get some more albums in the stores. That's when you know hard copies was was still a thing. Yeah. Did you do your promo tour at the time? Was you on a promo tour? And then I did a promo tour, and then I got on the um the chicken and the dude. I was the only West Coast artist on a chicken and beer tour. I was with David Banner, 
uh, Ludacris and DTP. Mm. I went on. I went on right before Ludacris. And, he, and Ludacris was the one that invited me to that situation. Mm. I mean, Ludacris is a cool, cool guy, man. So, so what happened with your label? Uh, well, I didn't get paid what I should have got paid from a guy. I'm not gonna say his name that owned the label. Mm. He was. He had 51%, I had 49%. I was the artist. Mm. And you know, Flip Capone, God rest his soul, we had Time Bomb that was on the Chronic album. Mm-hmm. One album, we had uh, Yikes, and we had Young Timer that was from New Orleans. Mm. And, you know, I made LA Confidential like 24, over $24 million in, in four years and didn't get paid. You didn't you know, get didn't nothing? Pay my money. No, I was getting, he was paying for me to live and me to live lavishly. Mm-hmm. He paying me with my money. <laughs> and then told you you didn't recoup? Yeah, just acting like he was doing me a favor, is what I'm saying. Got you. He was acting like he was doing me a favor. And, you know, I was getting my, I started getting my public checks and everything, but he was acting like he was still doing me a favor, but he wasn't doing nothing but paying me my, with my money. Mm-hmm. And he built a studio. We had the Laker room, the, the Clipper Room, it was in LA, you know, but everything he was building and putting into the label and paying the other artists and everything, that that was both of our money. I, that was the money I should have had in my pocket. Yeah. While he rolled around with ice and all this other shit on, $100,000 Rolexes and shit. I mean, my, my everybody, I was cool. I was living in Sherman Oaks. I was right living right there at the top of the condo uh, next door to uh, Lazy Bone from mm. from Bone Thugs, yeah, and Battle Cat was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was living lavish, and I had fly cars and shit. But if he just gave me my own money, you would have spent it different, right? Or spent it how you wanted to spend it, right? Got you. Might have tripled that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you step back from the game to to do fatherhood. Um, why are you back now? Cause my children grown they, and they they good and they in college and I'm, I'm proud of them my daughter and my my june bug my son mm-hmm. and it's time for me to come out the back end you so i mean it's time me, that's why i got why i released the album nocturnal night vision because my vision is still straight mm-hmm. i didn't stop doing what i was doing i got miss toy i got miss toy on that album mm-hmm. i got uh Tupac on that album with Crooked Eye. What? I you got, got Joe- what? You got what? Tupac with Crooked Eye on the same song. We heard the Tupac verse before? Never. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out. You got an unreleased Tupac verse on your new album. Yeah. That's actually in my YouTube community right now. Y'all could go get his album right now. And it's being being Crooked Eye with Tupac on it. Tupac's the first verse. I'm the second verse. And Crooked Eye back clean up. You know, he, he back clean up really well. So how do, I whoa, 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 but we can't just let you get past it. How, do, how, where would you get a Tupac verse? I don't uh, want you to reveal your source, but I'm just saying, like. If you listen to the song, you hear me say, they say the homie's gone. They say the homie's gone. How was that when I just seen him yesterday? That should say enough. No, it's no, not no. illegal. To, it's not illegal to kill your rap name in California. Knock, nah, don't fuck with me. You trying to say Tupac alive, bro? Don't fuck with me. <laughs> what? All I'm saying is, some people don't realize that you can get things if you're actually a cool person. Got you. Okay. And then, and then on top of that, I got Joe Moses on the album. Mm-hmm. And um, and like I said, Miss Toy. And then uh, it's a rapper, um, my a young cat, my little homie from uh, North Long Beach. His name is Meezy. Mm-hmm. And made by B H out here. His name is B H. And he's he's the, he's the commissioner of Santa Ana. <laughs> and he wow. make beats. Wow. And then and then uh, DJ Slaps. We call we call him Donkey Kong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But he got some. He got some bomb beats. What's the name? The of, name what's the name the of the name, Tupac song though? Because we want to highlight that. Bitch, I wish you would. Bitch, I wish you would. Oh, I wish you would. But that's what it's really saying. The hook. It's called "I Wish You Would." 
in his Tupac first verse. Hey, on the first verse and the hook. He's doing the hook. Whoa. And nobody's ever heard that before. Whoa. That's epic, I'm telling you. You gotta check that out. It's called I Wish You Would. No, we we gotta we gotta highlight that. Um I'm just in awe because I thought we all we heard all the Tupac shit. That's what mm -mm -mm -mm. Crazy. So go ahead. I got a, I got an eight uh I got well I got eight more I got eight more soundtracks to do, but I got a ten soundtrack deal with Mayhem Films and I already turned in two soundtracks. One of them is called uh the Snow Black soundtrack and the other one is because that's the name of the movie. Mm -hmm. And the other one's Mad as hell soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Got eight more soundtracks to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Still got more music. I got eight soundtracks and I got two more albums to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna be here for a minute. You know what I mean? I, I, when I got back out here, I I, I, I was smarter and I'm gonna work harder this time. You know what I mean? But before it was all about fun and just I was cool. Go, oh yeah, you bitches, some fucking bitches. Like My dad told me to go around the world, world once and fuck every bitch twice. <laughs> yeah. What what you think about the culture now? The culture's got a lot of money in it now. We I ain't get it like that. Like y'all might have got a little advance, uh, maybe some pub, but now you see the young kids, they getting some money now. Is it a perfect time to step back in it? It's because they can get it themselves through um through the internet. Mm-hmm. Going straight to them instead of them having a split shit with people where they're getting it themselves. Mm hmm That's why I'm on every uh internet platform that there is, social media platform that it is, because now the money can come straight to me and the label instead of us having to wait for the the distribution to give us the bread. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. We can get paid every month now mm -hmm. instead of paid every three months or every six months. Make, you know what I mean? Make we can a, pay every make, make a lot of sense. Um, And also the videos is not $500,000 videos no more. They're not Two hundred thousand dollar video. You can shoot a video for seven thousand. Yeah, I dug. I dug myself in a hole, hole with a lecture, like with the limos, the tour buses, all that shit. I dug myself in a hole, like and all the flyers, and the posters, and the billboards. I dug myself in a hole, like eight million before we started making money. So you, you was I mean? you was already in the red, eight million before you could before, even before LA Confidential started seeing money. They had to get. They had to recoup eight million. When they got the eight million, then we start making money. And I had to, and I had to, and I got to think the video with the special effects because remember you was every character in the video. That shit probably cost that a lot. That video, that video right there, cost eight eight hundred thousand alone, and we and we had to pay Miss. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We paid the director. I love that. Just to make it with eight hundred thousand to get the technology to make that. Yeah, because that was back then. That was kind of unheard of. Not when they had that technology to do it. Yeah, now we could do it with with a camera. And... Easily. Back then we had to buy all of the equipment to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. A lot of post production. Mm -hmm. A loan for the video was eight hundred thousand to get everything we needed with the with the with, you, with the rollaways with the, you know we roll with the track and and then I had to figure out how to not cross over myself mm -hmm. like you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Had a little spot in the spacer so he so I could know on the table and I did not cross over to myself. And man, that, that video was hard. That shit took me three days. Damn. That was a three day. I'm talking about three 16 hour days, bro, for the, to get that video right. But we but we couldn't do it. We had to start it at night and end it before the morning. I think when I stream that record, it's a drop on that song. Why is there a drop on that song? Huh? I think it's a drop, but if I'm not mistaken, when I uh, Apple Music did it was like this is the property. Of. Why is that on there? I think that's on there. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they did that. Yeah, because it did. Because I love the record and I was in the gym listening. It's like this is the property of a lecture. I'm like, what the fuck y'all put that on there for? I never heard of them doing that before. Because me and Missy Elliott was signed to Electric Records. Yeah, that's but a it, big song. Yeah, but it ain't on Busta Rhyme stuff. It ain't on ODB stuff. It's just your song. I know, but that was a really big major record, bro. Got you. That shit, that shit made me go global. Yeah. So they didn't want people to to, to go into there and just be streaming it themselves. They want you to listen to it. They let you know it came from a legend. Yeah, they definitely staked their claim on your record, if nobody else. So, um, you you got all these projects coming out. You got an album out now. Any visuals coming? 
Yeah, I got um the the first single I'm gonna drop is "Ain't Enough Time" with Meezy. Mm-hmm. It's called Time, and then the second video I'm gonna drop is uh, me and Miss Toy. You know, Miss Toy did. Uh, you could do it, put your back into Indeed. it. Yeah, Indeed. I can do it. That's Miss Toy. Mm-hmm. And you know, also did uh, "Everywhere I Go." All I ever seem to hear is "Bang Bang." Mm-hmm. And she's been in movies. Like she's been around for a while. Mm-hmm. You know, me and her, we just did the video for that. I just, I just finished the video for that yesterday. Dope, dope, dope. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't eight hundred thousand, was it? <laughs> Not at all. Probably wasn't even eight grand. That's the dope thing about technology now. That was like, that was like the video. This video cost like six thousand. Yeah. The most that we had to spend is the, the clothes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The technology that. Director, he used to do um his name is Tony. He used to do um videos for Universal and for Capitol Records. And now he makes movies. But mm-hmm. so I got a good team behind me and I got Mash behind me. Mm-hmm. Shout out is, to Mash. Yeah, which is the CEO of the label. And we got another dude named P. Wilson. He he also has a clothing line named Street Broker. So you go to Street Broker P Wilson Streetbroker dot com and get the clothing line. And but P. Wilson and Mass, they work and they jail well together. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? P. Wilson also does music. You know what I mean? So, 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 like so let me ask you EP. something. Be on my next EP. So and Mass can be too. If Mass don't get on my second EP, I'm I'm a drop I'm a drop myself from the label. <laughs> <laughs> let Let me ask you something. Not um in the great landscape of things, when we have this West Coast, le- do you say do you consider yourself a legend? I, I consider myself a human being, bro. I, I, y'all don't let this stuff get to my head. People call me a living legend, but um, I looked up what that meant. And I said, "Live a legend, live a legend." People always call me, "What the fuck does live a legend mean?" So I googled it on my phone. That's the intro to my album, mm. Night Vision. Mm. It says, and, and Wikipedia said, "A person that does something extremely well and is still you no, know, it's such a person that has done something extremely well and is still doing it as he lives." And I was like, okay, I might be a living legend. You really use that yeah. on your album? Yeah, that was that's the intro to my album. Yo, you know I didn't hear your album, right? So how mm-hmm. am I? I asked my phone what living legend. Everybody keep calling me a fucking living legend. What the fuck do that mean? That's the intro to my album. And I asked my phone that. And it explains it to you. No, the deep and thing is, I didn't listen to the album yet. And I'm just asking you this question just to ask you the question. And you tell me you put that's deep. So that's another reason for y'all to listen to I, I, everybody keep calling me. That's, let me instead of me having all talking shit with everyone on my album, let me live in legend. What the fuck? Everybody keep calling me that. Let me just ask my phone. What the fuck that means? <laughs> and the name of the album again is tell them what? And explained it. What's the, the name of person, Go ahead. Oh, the name of the album is Night Vision. It's, it's it's like a night at the round table, so it's spelled with a K, of course, because that's what my rap name is spelled like K O C T L. And then is is night vision, but it's V I Z I O N because you know you know rappers can't spell anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why is your rap name spelled like that? This is K. The K is silent. Well, I know why K- you don't. I know why you don't got the C and the K together. But I'm just saying, like, why is it the the dash then the hyphen after the end? Why is it spelled like that? Oh, because I had to figure out how to copyright my name. Mm. Somebody already had the name Nocturnal. Mm. You know what I mean? As a rap name. So I had a, my first rap name was Dr. Seuss. You know that that shit. <laughs> he wasn't they wasn't gonna let that fly at all. You dead on that. Second rap name was Nature Boy. And then Nas came out with somebody called Nature, so I had to change that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then I said, okay. I'm nocturnal, forget it. because I that's when I was in the pen mm-hmm. and I worked and I was the lead man on the back dock taking his food off the truck at night. Mm. So my only from the hood named Crybaby, he was like, man, why don't you just call yourself Nocturne? You, you up all night anyway. Mm. I was like, okay. I tried to copyright that. Then I found out there was somebody in New York with that rap man. Mm. I know that was the name of an album, though. It wasn't, it was Health the Skelter, the name of the album was Nocturnal. No, it was a rapper that named itself Nocturnal in New York. Mm, who the fuck name is Nocturnal? I can't think um, of it. But I know it, it was, it, they said the name was copyrighted already in New York. So you so had, had to change. 
I had to change the way I spelt it. Got you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Got you. So, so you you dropped this album. Go ahead. He's close, so you know that I'm not or not him. Gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. I don't even know who you're talking about. Just to keep it real. I'm from the East Coast, and I don't even know who you're talking about. Shout out to them, though. But I don't know. Have no idea who that is. Right. I'll be getting a DM. I'm not turning. Watch, watch. They, I'm, I'm gonna show it to you. Be like, yo, look, they DM me because everybody watch everything. I ever say, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm the original Nocturne. Yeah, I'm the real Nocturne. That's the fake Nocturne. Yeah. Um, Fuck everything. That ain't what the world say. Yeah. Nah. Nah. You definitely um put on. When you, when, some, when, you, when some when you, you when you got somebody else rap name. Whoever make the first hit, that's who the real one is. <laughs> Facts, yeah, because that's all the world gonna acknowledge anyway. Right, <laughs> the other one, you you the fake one now. Because there was a rapper named Biggie Smalls, you know that, right? But we don't. Yeah, and but but guess who made it first? Yeah, yeah. The one that we know about. Yep, yep, yep. When when that yeah. East Coast West Coast shit was going on, where was you at? In the pen. Oh, okay. So in the pen, did y'all have an opinion, or was y'all like? Did y'all not give a fuck? We, it was funny to us. We had other shit to worry about. Exactly. Like trying not, trying not to get into it with the essays and the white people. <laughs> do, do, do you know it's funny? Because me being a New Yorker, I don't. we always hear y'all talk about it. What impact do the essays really have on Los Angeles? They control it. Wow. We are the, we are the minority. They, they are the majority. Wow. Majority is not even white people. The majority is Hispanics. Wow, I love it because the Hispanics is my biggest following out here. So I I, I get peace everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. They love my music. They be inviting me to all kind of shows. They invite me to per birthday parties at they at their pads, <laughs> all kinds of shit. Bar mitzvahs mm -hmm. and shit, right? <laughs> I be to their daughters bar mitzvah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, that, that's they the one that, that built me in California is the Hispanic people. You know that's deep because a lot of us that don't know we would think the C's and B's run shit. But, but niggas bootleg records. Hispanics were gonna buy it for memory of it. Mm. Niggas bootleg shit out here. <laughs> you <don't fuck> with. <laughs> but you know that a lot of us thought the C's and the B's run LA. We wouldn't think it was essays. Oh, essays run, bro. Damn. We we got our own natural tact. We know how to deal with them, but they run it. So for sure. No, that's dope. Shout out to all the um the deepest community out here is Hispanics. Yeah, shout out to all the we essays. We make up probably I would say maybe eighteen percent of California. Mm. And the Senate, Hispanics make up about fifty. Damn. <laughs> shout out to them though. Shout out to them. You know, I ain't I don't I ain't into no separate shit. And especially if y'all supporting, y'all buying records, y'all watching the interviews, shout out to y'all. <laughs> They bump our music all the time. They bump East Coast music, West Coast music. Mm. They, bump, they bump down South music. They stay bumping our shit. Dope. And Dope. they fly ass rappers out here now. They didn't have that before. Yeah, facts. Yeah, it is a couple. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fly ass rappers. Now they got them. Your social media, Um, something happened with your Instagram, the original? Yeah. So what's the Instagram now? Uh, It's nocturnal, K-N-O-C-T-U-R-N-A-L-L-B at Gmail. Got you. No, that's your email. What's your what's your um Instagram? The real nocturnal. Okay, yeah, you just gave out your you just gave out your Gmail. Good luck with that. Now your shit will be flooded. Thank you for doing that live, buddy. <laughs> I'm gonna have to bleak that out. <laughs> Cause you're about, I they gave me on the Gmail, the D, the Instagram. Yeah. It's all good. You're about to get demos, you're about to get uh all types of shit. Good luck. I, yeah, I can't have my email. I ain't doing that. So man, um, on you on Twitter? I uh, used to be, but I don't even know what that account is anymore. <laughs> you gotta get back on Twitter, man. You gotta get on everything. We gotta make sure you on everything. I, I get back on Twitter. It's all good. I I just stopped using it because I was like, it's, it's too it was too much bullshit on there. Yeah, it it, it got crazy. Motherfuckers would hit me up talking about, hey man, yeah man, uh, let me get your number. Uh, so I'm gonna do a song with you. You know what I'm saying? I, I I get my number. They call. They be like, they have me on speakerphone, and I can hear bitches and niggas in the background. Hey, what's up, Nub? No? Like 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 a nigga know me. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah yeah yeah. That's not what I gave you my number for. That's why I had to keep changing my. I used to change my number like every six months because 
people be trying to act like they be trying to act like they want to do music, and they be hit me up on speakerphone and talking like they know me. I be like, what 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 happened with the song you was talking about making? Got you. Now you just you fall to people just because you got my number. Let me change my number. Got you. Got once, you. Once you get too many of those type of calls, you got to change your number. So, yeah. um, is it a specific YouTube the video is on or gonna be on your videos? It's gonna go on every platform, bro. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean, as soon as they come out, the, my my the way it ain't enough time video should be out uh, this week. Mm -hmm. And the Miss Toy video after get it's not even edited yet. We just finished it yesterday, so yes. after we edited, we're gonna we're gonna release that one. And then um, the song with Tupac and Crooked Eye, we're gonna make some. Okay, I can't tell you. Yeah, yeah, don't 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 give the sauce away, bro. Just okay, because I can't ruin the, the surprise on that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna do the video is very creative. Watch, everybody gonna love it. The way I'm gonna create the video and do it, because you know I always uh, I play a big part in every video that I create. Yeah, and that's why my, my videos always have a concept behind them. So, but like this this video with be Tupac and Crooked Eye. This is it's gonna be epic. Dope, man. So, yo, um. This is what I want to do. When the videos come out, you know I'm definitely going to push them, promote them on my platform. His album is out right now, Night Visions with the Z. Um, it's in my YouTube community. It's on my Twitter. It's on my website. It's on my Facebook. It's about to go on my Instagram, too. Um, and make sure y'all picked it up. If you don't pick it up for nothing, he said he got an unreleased Tupac verse. So if you don't pick it up for anything, that's why you should pick it up. Well, if you don't pick it up for nothing else, if if you feel like I still don't got it, pick it up to talk shit about me online. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Knock, man, I want to thank you for coming through. Um, as, as you know, as you drop project, you family, so you're going to come back, you know, um, and we're going to talk shit, man. I want to thank you for having you today, and um, I'll holler at you later on. Shout out to Mad, shout out to Big Steel, my partner, for putting all this together, and um, we go from there, bro. D D DK Slaps, I love, I love all y'all, man. Thank you for bringing me back my, out of my back cave. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, sir. Yes, sir. All right, we holler later on. I'm going to sign you out. No right, problem. Peace. Thank yeah. you. So, yeah, that was the... I, he said he Googled living legend, and um, he don't feel like he's a living legend. Or he just want to know what a living legend is. I happen to really like... um, You know, for me, man, if a person make one record I like, that's good enough for me, and... um. I love Nocturnal as an artist. He had a, he made songs that I love. I love Bad Intentions, and I love Take It Easy. If I don't love nothing else, I love Take It Easy. Um, and he's in my gym playlist, and um, that's it. And I love the video, too. The video is dope. So I want to thank y'all for joining us today. Like, comment, share, and if you're not subscribed, Subscribe now. I'm Doggy Diamonds, man. I really appreciate y'all for rocking with me. Peace.